morning everyone and it's great to be with you again. I don't know what sort of week you've had, I've actually really enjoyed my week. I've managed to get together a garden arch and concrete it in, uh, managed to clear out the gar garage and do lots of practical things and I've got lots to show for it, things that I can't normally do. I've really enjoyed it. But I know for some of you it's been a really, really tough week and I've heard some heartbreaking stories. And so for those of us um, who've been able to get out and exercise, enjoy the fresh air, for those of us who've been stuck at home and in isolation, I know it's been tough and I know there's people with real health problems, real heartbreaking situations that I'm very aware of. So whatever you're going through, I just want you to all to be assured of my prayers, my thoughts. Barry and I have been thinking of you, praying for all of you um, during the week and you're all very special to us, all part of our family. But today you're going to be really relieved, you haven't got to listen just to me. Um, I've got Elaine who's going to be um, doing a reflection on the road to Emmaus. The, what happened for those early disciples after the death in, of Jesus before they realised the resurrection had fully happened. So I'm going to read um, to you from uh, Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, verse 13 to 35. The road to Emmaus. I'm going to read it from the message version. Then after that, Elaine is going to come and do a reflection on that. So here goes. That same day, two of them were walking to the village of Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were deep in conversation, going over all these things that had happened in the in the middle of their talk and questions. Jesus came up and walked along with them, but they were not able to recognise who he was. He asked, what's this you're discussing so intently as you walk along? They just stood there, long-faced, like they'd just lost their best friend. Then one of them, his name was Cleopas, said, are you the only one in Jerusalem who hasn't heard what's happened during the last few days? He said, what has happened? They said the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene. He was a man of God, a prophet, dynamic in work and word, blessed by both God and the people. Then our high priests and leaders betrayed him, got him sentenced to death and crucified him. And we had our hopes up that he was the one the one who was about to deliver Israel. And it is now the third day since it happened. But now some of our women have completely confused us. Early this morning they were at the tomb and couldn't find his body. They came back with the story that they'd seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of our friends went off to the tomb to check and found it empty just as the women said, but they didn't see Jesus. Then he said to them, so thick headed, so slow hearted. Why can't you simply believe all the prophets said? Don't you see that these things had to happen, that the Messiah had to suffer and only then enter into glory? Then he started at the beginning with the book of Moses and went on through all the prophets, pointing out everything in the scriptures that referred to him. They came to the edge of the village where they were headed, and he acted as if he were going on, but they pressed him, stay and have supper with us. It's nearly evening. The day is done. So he went in with them. And here is what happened. He sat down at the table with them. Taking the bread, he blessed and broke it and gave it to them. At that moment, open-eyed, wide-eyed, they recognised him. And then he disappeared. Back and forth they talked. Didn't we feel on fire as he conversed with us on the road, as he opened up the scriptures for us? They didn't waste a minute. They were up and on their way back to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and their friends gathered together, talking away. It's really happened. The master has been raised up. Simon saw him. 
Then the two went over everything that happened on the road and how they recognised him when he broke the bread. It's an amazing story and Elaine's going to come and do a reflection on that for us now. Hello. And here we see the disciples on the road to Emmaus, walking with Jesus, but actually not recognising him. I've got to admit, I do find that strange. But why? If I'm going out for the evening, I might put on a dress, so I might look different. I might have my hair done and some makeup. In normal circumstances, I would be wearing jeans and my glasses. And this is how I'm recognised. So if I was down the road and I didn't have my glasses on and somebody saw me from a distance, they might not instantly recognise me. Saying that, a few months back, I was down the town and a lady come up and spoke with me and I thought I know her, but I just couldn't place her. Anyway, I carried on chatting. I didn't like to be rude, but at the end of it, I had to ask Darren, who was that person? And he said, that's our neighbour from down the road. Of course, she wasn't in the right context. So I hadn't recognised her. She was normally in her front garden and this time she was down the town and looked different. So maybe I can understand why they hadn't recognised Jesus. That and the fact that he had died three days earlier. They probably wasn't expecting Jesus to be walking down the road with them. To be fair, would we? Would we expect somebody who had died three days earlier to actually be walking with us? Probably not. So even though they may have like looked at him and thought, maybe I know you, they may have not realised, well, they didn't realise who he actually was. But they were walking down the road with their own upsets, with their own disappointments, and they might not have seen him just because of that. As far as they were concerned, he was going to be a ruler and he was going to take over. So why on earth did God not save Jesus from the cross? Why did he let him die? He would have probably been way beyond what they were even thinking, even though they had been told that he would rise three days later. Even though the women had told them that Jesus was alive and that is what they was told. The disciples couldn't have believed because here they are going back, back to Emmaus. Maybe that's where they came from, back to the place where they knew comfort. They didn't stay with the other disciples. They didn't stay and may have missed out on a relationship with Jesus if he hadn't have walked with them. But here he is, as far as they're concerned, a stranger walking beside them. And then they invite him in and it's at that moment when he breaks bread that they fully realise that it is Jesus. Now he's been talking to them all the way down the road, telling them of how he needed to die and how that was revealed in the scriptures. But they hadn't realised until that moment when he broke bread. It didn't matter how much he had told them, it was in the seeing and the reveal in that breaking of bread that they had realised who he actually was. And then do you see the joy and the excitement as they run back to tell the other disciples that they have met with the risen Jesus. They don't leave it, they don't stay overnight. They run back immediately. They go back to tell because now they know that Jesus is alive. 
Now they know that they want to tell the other disciples. Have we had an experience, maybe, where we have actually tried to explain to somebody who maybe doesn't know God about an experience maybe that we've had with God? A God incident. And maybe they've just gone, it's just a coincidence. And you're so upset that they can't see what you're actually trying to tell them. It's probably a bit like Jesus. You're trying to explain the situation and how it was God that actually came into that situation. But they don't see it. They just think it's just a coincidence. And maybe you'll tell them another one. And still it's a coincidence to them. And it's not until they experience Jesus and the risen God for themselves that they actually realise the significance of what maybe you've told them. And then they will believe what you've told them. But some people have to have an experience. Like those first disciples, they had to have that experience. And hence, we might only be able to pray for somebody and tell them of our own experiences. And maybe it will take years and we don't even see the situation change. But I believe if we keep praying for them, they may also know Jesus and God in their lives and the love that God has for each one of us. But then, for us, in this situation that we find ourselves in, what are we doing? Are we forward looking? Are we hearing what other people are telling us? Or are we looking back ourselves? Are we on the road to Emmaus and going back to comfort zones? Or are we running with joy back to Jerusalem? I wonder, what can we do to help us run back to Jerusalem in these times? These uncertain times. It does feel weird having church like this me talking to my phone rather than talking to people up at a church. But in these uncertain times, we can still have the love of God with us. So we can still pray, go further into the Bible and read that and help and get, ask God to reveal his love for us. And we can actually look for those signs of God being with us in our every day. Yes, it might not be the same. Things are different. And who knows what it actually means at the end of all this. But I feel that what we need to do at the moment is keep realising that God is there with us. That he sends his Holy Spirit to walk alongside us so that we can know his experience, uh, his love and experience his love with us. So, do we know it? Do we know that joy? Do we feel his peace? Do we know God, God's presence with us? I pray that we can spend more time just to be in God's presence at this moment. We can't go out. We can't do a lot of things that we would like to do. We can keep in contact in this way and on phone calls. But 
although we want to keep in contact with each other, let's not forget to put God at the centre and to have our relationship with God developed even further. So, are we walking to Emmaus or are we walking to Jerusalem, or running to Jerusalem? I pray we are all running to Jerusalem, knowing God's love for us and God with us. Amen. God bless you all. So thank you so much, Elaine, for that. I'm going to just end now with a blessing. Just remember, wherever we are, whatever we're doing, Jesus is with us. He cares about us. He loves us. And we're here for one another um, as part of God's family. And we need to share um, when we realise Jesus is, is at work in our lives, even in the bad times, even in the hard times, to share those things with one another. The excitement of those first disciples when they all got together in Jerusalem was amazing. Some of them had seen, um, Simon had seen Jesus and the disciples on the road to Emmaus had seen him. And when they brought those experiences together, it was just like a fire, just catching fire. That life, that new life breathed into them. So may the risen Lord Jesus Christ, who out of death brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So goodbye, God bless and be with you again soon. Take care.